Okay. Okay, let's start. <coughs> now it's about the uh, shades of uh, objects. And uh, again, these documents are available uh, on our website. It's just a single file. I get a little bigger. <coughs> so what we will have, it's, it's a very straight line in Mathematica, so we know Mathematica today. Uh, this I will do <coughs> in further lectures that I can have this clear comparison of how uh, 3D models and graphics are done in Mathematica, how uh, it is done with Python, and how it is it done uh, with a CAT system like Blender. So that you have this comparison, we understand the principal structure behind all these uh, kind of systems. Today it's straightforward, just the way <coughs> I told you Blender is, or is, is the open way how to give form to code, to make it real, to make code real. So today is all the different facets of how to get a thing real. Last week we had this interplay with a 3D printer to make it real. So and uh, you have to understand these principles about G-code and so on is the principle how these factories work. So if you have a Hundegger machine cutting all these uh, <coughs> as this wood to make your roof, it's G-code. It's working exactly the same. There is no other logic. But to understand, just to control angles, all these actuators, give them the different actuators of a machine and sync them in time to do something. That's it. So it gets a little more complicated if you go to a production of a, of a car because then you have hundreds of these machines. But the, the principle how this is orchestrated is looking at uh, the actuators. So we had seven with this uh, with this cruiser. Control them with G commands. G1, G5, G104, and give that certain parameters. And make sync that in time. That's it. All machines work like that. That's very important. So if you want to have the production of a house in a factory or on site with robots, it's like that. Therefore, these exercises with these 3D printers are very instructive. And I don't think it's too much of a use as my criticism to have this in one-to-one, -one, like we have it in this big hall with these big robots, because conceptually it's the same like this small one. And you can do it at home. It's like play around and you get the conception. You don't need to make it one-to-one. -one. This is, I think, for the production and for the industry and so on. So this was one way. And today we will, <coughs> one way of getting, uh, bringing a code to form. So the hypothesis is that the drawing of today, of the 20th century, is code. So it makes no sense to draw things, 100 versions of things and so on, if you make one poem like code and have thousands of things, or thousands of the same with these parameters and so on. You simply can adapt things. If you, if you control the production, this is what, uh, what I told you uh, last week, if you control the production of how a plane evolves, if you code it, then it makes no sense to make the actual drawing because this is to the machine. And you have to talk to the machine, to the production of drawing. So it's one step more abstract. And if you control the production of the drawing, you can control the production of the thing itself. You can uh, control the production, like the construction of the building. So you can uh, control the production of, uh, in, in, the in, 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 a, in a hall, in a production hall, in, in the factory. 
you can have the control the production to a, a high quality photorealistic rendering and so on. So it doesn't matter because the structure keeps the same. This is your architecture. The structure how to evolve to a form. And Blender gives you a bunch of things how to make, th make your ideas articulated in code real. So that's the idea. So the beauty of Blender is that you have a bunch of it. And we will have today <coughs> we have very simple modeling. This is what people think CAT is. The first one. Snapping is uh, I, I will go there a little, um, <clears throat> is a kind of craftsmanship, how to control these irrational coordinates, get things fit. Uh, then you have uh, this principal shading, you have animation, you have simulation, we will do that, you have interaction, you have imaging, and you have stereo imaging, and you have HDR lighting. So these things are <laughs> with, uh, with Blender. So it's a bunch of, 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 of things which your code can be rendered with. Don't you get, get it to a quasi-professional level with that. At your, if you understand the principles, this is what I want to teach you and I want you, you to train. If you understand these principles, they are at your fingertip as an architect. You don't need to be professional to do that. That's very important, that's new. So for five years ago, this was not possible. So, there will be a lot of, so these are five or six I want you to learn. You have to train that. And this will be part of the exam uh, in the, uh, in the uh, next exam round in your, uh, in the break, semester break. So they are online on uh, YouTube and you should try it. And I will uh, um, talk about it, no go in detail in these tutorials because the tutorials are, this is a problem with the lecture. So this is why so all this training of this is a kind of craftsmanship. You need time and you need individual time. So and it's not an academic thing. Therefore I'm very happy now to experience these YouTube stuff, because it's orthogonal to, to, uh, to the talks I can do in, a, in an academic environment as a lecture. And then I can give you a kind of framing to the actual doing. And then you can concentrate in your speed with your interest and so on on the different uh, 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 tutorials and the how-to. So this, I think, is a way how to integrate these both things. And I'm happy to explore <laughs> these uh, kind of formats. Uh, that's the first time and you see it, it's very rough at the beginning how I'm doing it but I'm starting to feel comfortable now. Uh, yeah, it's getting better and better. So this uh, uh, for today. So we will have images, shades, lights, animation, simulation and interaction today. Uh, in addition to the three op very obvious kind of, of 3D printing. Yeah. Yeah, and therefore this lecture is about how your model, so your idea of uh, uh, the articulation of what your architecture should be, how is it, whatever it is, appears. So how it get real. Because your architectural idea is always virtual. It's not there. And you have to think about it and you have to talk about it and you have to article, write it down somewhere and somehow. And to make it appear, this is what, uh, what is if the focus of today's uh, lecture. So I'm focusing on less, uh, only on very simple models, it's just these bricks. Because keep it abstract and focus on the appearance of model. So, therefore, in our uh, um, in our <clears throat> uh, distinction between uh, particles and waves and so on, now we are on the sculptural side. So we are not on the painting side today. T next week we will focus on the painting side. So therefore we are with this architecture of, uh, I told you, with, with the Greek temples, 
with the Villa Rotonda of Palladio, Renaissance architecture, or uh, for example with the uh, Villa Savoie of uh, Le Corbusier uh, last century. Discussion of that you'll find in the uh, episode in the lecture 10 last semester about graphics and uh, CAT, how these things uh, are interrelated. So, how, and this is a very kernel, what I'm telling about, about what CAT systems are. And I always want to, so I told you, it's very dangerous, these kind of tools that you follow the lines and it's like the Rattenfinger of Hamel. You simply follow them and then pff, you're done with your architecture. <laughs> Therefore, I'm very, uh, very much hesitating telling you this is a way how to do things because then you follow this line and you're done as architect. So therefore, I want to give you a context which is a little surprising, normally how these CAT systems work. And what we will have today is the very principal idea of CAT system, which is the upper side of our dichotomy. It's on geometry of things. So on putting things on stage, elements on stage. So and to, this is what I'm always doing. So the, the hypothesis is that wherever you are, whether in architecture, in music, in art, in cinema, or in computer graphics, or in a certain time, masterpieces are of the same body of thinking. So then they're not contradicting. If things of a certain time are masterpieces and they contradict in your opinion, then you don't get, didn't get the point of that time. You have to think more abstract. Or these are not masterpieces. So, and there are very few of them. That's very important as well. <laughs> Get rid of Stein. What are masterpieces and why are this few of them? So I gave you a reference, I think, last semester. Yeah? So, <clears throat> in architecture, we had, um, we go here. It's around uh, 1960s and we had this strange thing. So what we have always is uh, uh, Oskar Niemeyer, a UN headquarter in New York. It's this. This is early in the 1950s. And it's a little, I think, in post-war architecture, this is old school, orthodox. What is very interesting is here, Robert Venturi, it's 1960, this building. This is more interesting for this time with the upcoming of computer graphics. So, but just to give some Mies van der Rohe. Yeah? Architecture starts when you carefully put two bricks together. There it begins. Telling that 1959. This is what we will do. Today I will show you how to make big bricks. Nothing more. So we are in this paradigm of architecture. Don't mix it up. So the sculpture way and looking on architecture in the 1960s and this minimalistic uh, uh, kind of thinking, this kind of architecture, and I'm not sure with these two, this, I'm very irritated with the, I never would say, yeah, would say Venturi with this kind of postmodern setup is 1960. Oh. So I always said, thought it's this. There's something wrong. I don't know yet. So, and this guy here is old fashioned. I think he had his time in the 20s. Nevertheless, this is two bricks together, and this is what we have with our sculpture. So, and it's not all what we can talk about architecture today, but it's important that we get this certain aspect of it. So, the, the same is Super Studio. It's 96. Um, an architectural model for total urbanization. This is 50 years old. Very contemporary, huh? So in Superstudio is a direct teacher of Kolas and Hadid and so on. 
And then here, read that. If design is merely an inducement to consume, then we must reject design. Until then, design must disappear. We can live without architecture. So this is what I set up. I said, this is architecture and this is design. So we really have, in this time, we have to skip design, that's right. And we have to re-articulate architecture. And in this time, architecture was very rough and pure. It was existentialistic. To get used to this empty void of the nothingness, having points, quantum points in the nothingness. And you see how people are there, these hippies, Computers were there, you had these kind of super grids and from Super Studio and so on. And therefore, our lecture today is about the shades of the objects, and next week we will have the views of the meshes. The other way around, there's a painting on it. So, if you go just to get it clear how, how the thinking was, I simply make that as a method. So I conceptualize it so, and put together things I like, I, I find of value. Persons and masterpieces I, uh, I uh, like and I find of value, which is appealing for me. So I collect these for a certain, to get an idea of a certain time which is remote to me. It's the time of my parents. To get an idea, I collect masterpieces of all, of, of different disciplines. Because I don't believe that disciplines don't talk and they are specialized in certain things. Masterpieces of certain disciplines of a certain time are of the same kind of thinking. Aggregating them, putting them in a shelf, showing it, looking at it, listening at it, reading it, and so on, gives you an understanding of this time. And by that you get better understanding of what the masterpiece of architecture of that time was. So now, for example, go to, uh, to uh, Sartre on intellectualism. Why is it not? Okay, go. No. Well, this is how they talk. The beauty of YouTube is that the 20th century is really available. And the question then is, it's on intellectualism, what is he talking about? Look at it. There are nice videos about summaries so Sartre's philosophy in five minutes. Look it up and look what is it about. And then you get an understanding. And then this person, do you like him? Would you like to have a, have a dinner with him or have a drink with him or not? So if you trust him, listen. If not, take another one. So, but he's a very, yeah, obviously he's a, a master of his time in literature and philosophy. So, in music, yeah, go here to, for Velvet Underground, so, it's his time here, look at here, for example. Was immer. <laughs> Sometimes I feel so happy Sometimes I feel so sad Sometimes I feel so happy It's <laughs> from the, the 60s, yeah, 60s, somewhere 
So this don't stop, it gets for, for 10 hours. So I, I really... <laughs> this... <laughs> okay, this is... I'm really happy that I got this album when I was young. I was very proud of it. So, <clears throat> our here. I grew up in Cologne and he's our hero. Stockhausen. Our Gesang der Jünglinge. So for me, it's very important. I grew up with these with these kind of stuff in, in, in near Cologne, and this was important. So, art. Go for example, like with Velvet Underground. Go to Andy Warhol. Just Google uh, Warhol '64, and you get all these images. So these iconic images here: Elvis, Monroe the Polaroids, and so on. That's the time, whatever it is. Don't try to understand what it is. Get a patchwork around your thing you're interested in. So just to give a climatic understanding of uh, what is going on in cinema. And I would, I would suggest simply collective things from the 60s, from the, from the 20s, from the 40s, from the 80s, and always say, I like that I don't like it. I like that I like it. So, and make your collections, your, your ranking around these, around these decades, always 20 years, plus, plus minus 10, and make your collections. And by that you get a, get a press over time, if, you're, if you live with that, you get an understanding of these times, what, what they thought. And then you get an understanding what is at stake today. You get a clear understanding of how these things uh, develop in your personal view. You don't need to get a theory about that. It's a kind of coexistence with these bodies of thinking. And don't think there's a, a line in progression along the time. It's cross uh, uh, disciplines, this line. That's the important thing. Now, here, about this kind of architecture here, go for playtime with Tati. And there are these objects <coughs> placed in time. And so. And the title, Playtime, <laughs> is like that. Play, playing objects in time. And they are isolated. Look at this synthesizer. That's a Stockhausen again. <laughs> it's a kind of satire about the same thing. And it's the 60s. Look at the gestures, look how they are introduced, how they are closed. So today these things are much more uh, smooth. They are, uh, there's a kind of, um, of, of painting and, and, and morphing between characters and so on. Here they are like that and they are moving very precisely in space. <laughs> look at this incredible, this setup. Here, him. <laughs> okay. Or here, Marienbad. Guarda, je reviens maintenant à un rendez-vous fixé par elle-même. 
qui est palandée avec lui. Donc on a des sept à la place. Mais la jeune femme dit qu'elle ne le connaît pas. L'ingresse. Un décor. Qui a raison Qui ment L'homme est-il un banal séducteur, un fou Ou bien confond-il deux visages Que s'est-il vraiment passé l'année dernière Ok, that's enough. Ah, hein? So, and now, the thing I want to show you. <laughs> and want, because you want to get rid of this technoid uh, stuff. The sketch, uh, computer sketchpad. No, he is at MIT and is presenting the first computer graphics system. Yeah, the same time. <laughs> he is uh, even Sutherland. Yeah, you can look it up. Very famous. No, he's painting. <laughs> yeah, look it up. So it's the beauty is everything is available on uh, on YouTube. But now you get it. So the, the interesting is on this thing, it's embedded and it's of the same thinking like a subtle, a little bit underground, whatever you like from this time. And by that it's getting colorful. So you get a body of thinking and part of that is upcoming uh, computer graphics. This is what I want. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> And uh, the rhetorics of, of all these tools is that you get productive. So it's not the problem of that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, now <clears throat> let's uh, start with, uh, with Blender. And go for the most simple uh, modeling. We had It's always like this here. We have to open it, the package content, because of the hackers tool. We go, we go to so. <coughs> this is in our, our environment. Um, <coughs> this is our point, and these are with. Uh, I can I can uh, go here with. Then you see tools here. Yeah. So this is a point. These are uh, the, the elements I can, uh, they are pre predefined. So we just take uh, the cube and the plane. They have an insertion point. The insertion point is always with this uh, pirate. Uh, with N here, you get uh, the <coughs> uh, these panels. These are the properties of uh, of the position of the selected objects, of the view. Of the, these are the parameters of the view, uh, of the uh, cursor, and, and and so on, of the display, and so on. These are the parameters of the whole setup. You can go here, and with T, you get the tools available. So. And this is expandable. I think you checked it uh, up with your installation already. So <clears throat> now we want to uh, to, to model. <clears throat> this is with the with the uh, snapping. This is the most important thing as a, as a sculptor. So and uh, for animation and uh, design and so on, you have the. And you have the problem that you're making these kind of things. So, and then it's not this important 
So it's important that you have these symmetries, but it's not this important how these uh, dimensions are and so on, because you don't have to fit it with others. So it doesn't have to fit. So architecture is different. Architecture is a jointing of things, and it's a kind of established repetition and so on. So in architecture, you're always dealing with hundreds of thousands, millions of objects, and you have to put them and, and to organize them. In design, it's a few and they are complicated and complex. By that, and they have, they are sculptures. So, which means they have a clear outer, uh, outer appearance and it's not important, this important, whether it's precise to the very millimeter. It just has to look good because it doesn't have to fit. So, therefore, <coughs> uh, the stool, for example, and these generic CAT systems, they are good for looking good. They're not optimized, so it's not a key interest that things match. So, and therefore, for architecture, it's a little hidden and it's underdeveloped how these grids are working. So, and uh, so, and this is here, there's a magnet. So you see what happens here. If we go, if we get with the magnet, so you have red, green, and blue. So here is red. Then you have constraint to the X axis, uh, Y axis, and Z axis. So and you see here the coordinates, they are proper. They are in meters. If you want to uh, change that, uh, you have the scene here. This is a property uh, window. The C, you can go here for the units and you say it's, it's meters, so by default it's meters. That's good, here. And if you want to go in the display, you see here, you can change the scale of it. And therefore you can say I want to have it on 0.2. And now it's meters by 0.2. And now I can uh, change, you see it on the lower left corner here. Here it's in 20 centimeters now. So let's leave it to, to one meter. So, so that's important here. But now we say, for example, this should be a zero. And you can put it back always if you simply get in the coordinates here, or you can simply drag over all of them and say it should be 4, 4, or it should be 0, 0. So this is if the magnet is on, you are always precise in the grid. If you have it uh, to, the, uh, to the grid, this is to the objects. We will have it later. So this is a global grid. This is a local grid. It's very important, global and local. And you have to decide how you want to organize your things. This is a kind of top-down, bottom-up, and you have to decide how you are working. From top-down, then you have need the uh, local grid. If you want to go bottom-up, then you have the global grid. So which is a double articulation? Top-down, global, <laughs> uh, and uh, top-down, local. These are always these kind of pairs uh, we are interested in. And you have to be aware of that. So now we have this. If you get that off, then you can, for example, make this. And especially in 3D view, you have a, a mass here, you see it. No control, because your mouse is 2D and your, uh, your virtual space of design is 3D. And uh, then you have an irrational perspective of your, uh, of, the, of your view, which means the position of the mouse in correspondence to the design space is irrational. So there's no way to get points fit. So, if you want to go back, there are two ways. You can, uh, so this point to zero, go S here, 
um, then a cursor to a center, then it's at zero, zero. Then you can go S and they say uh, selection to cursor. Then we are back again and it's zero. You also could, can say I want to sele can select that and put that to zero. So, or you can uh, uh, go back um, and uh, now we are some, uh, put it somewhere and then you can say uh, selection to grid, then you get the n uh, nearest uh, grid to this center point of this object. So that's a little unfortunate as well. So in architecture we want to add objects and by that this insertion point is always at the corner or with the column it's at the bottom it's never at the center of an object if you're sculpturing it's always in the center and this is a sculpturing animation software therefore all these defaults are strange yeah you can change it but the defaults are of this strange uh, setup so Go for zero. Now we can uh, go with G. No. <coughs> now switch is on. So this is the, uh, the grid. And we want to have the most uh, simple uh, uh, modeling. And this is working like that. Now we go <coughs> have that. To, uh, to put that to an architectural thing. So we want to have it on top of the ground. Now we establish a ground. And, uh, put, uh, put the center to zero. Add a plane. Scale it by uh, six, for example. So take that. Um, scale it. No, um, with with G, I'm able to. In in X direction, I can able. I'm able to move it in X, or I can move it in Y, or I can move it in Z. These are the constraints. So with this is with G. With uh, S, I can scale it. F S X I can scale it in uh, in uh, X direction. So we want to have um, double size to make a kind of brick. So to get the parameters of this tool, go here and then we say in X we want to have two, in Y and in Z we want to have a factor one. So now we have a brick. One to one to two. Name it. So we go to the parameters, give it this is a brick, give it a color. And uh, this I told you, um, it's very important to see there's a lot of different uh, shaders they got very complicated but what we have is a principal shader and from then on things got easy you should we should have a 95 percent you should simply take that so <clears throat> take it for uh, as it is so we say and we have to name this material otherwise we get in problems because we have a huge list of different things so we say this is a uh, white plastic So, later on we will have physics and so on. Now, duplicate with D. Now we see in 3D it's a little complicated to do that. We can go to for constraint with X. Now we have, because it's one to one, our grid fits to the, uh, to the size of the object. Now we have uh, proper fitting uh, objects here. So, do the same thing again. Duplicate X here, rotate around the Z axis by 90 degrees. Lock it up. No, I didn't get it. 90 degrees. 
now you go to the top view to because here it's easier to manipulate that to, to see how it's working so because now the z-axis is constrained so if i'm in a, in a two-dimensional view orthographic then the uh, other uh, axis is constrained so people uh, things keep in that and where they are so <clears throat> So duplicate Z X duplicate Z G X duplicate Z So, scale this by factor 2. This is our ground. Go here. Ground. Give this ground attributes, like this is the, uh, a new material. This is the green ground. Three. So now again the principle, giving it a color, go to the from the physical to the uh, sensible uh, representation, give it here uh, a one by three, so it's a pure uh, uh, green, um, brightness one, saturation one. Okay, so. Give this now 0.2. This is my green. Okay, we have it here. This is our object mode. That's very important. So this is what we are talking about uh, today. These are the object modes. This is a sculptural thing. This is architecture, and this is edit mode we will have uh, next week. So we go into the objects. So. <clears throat> um, this here is how to render this thing. So currently we are in, in solid. So which means I yeah, have a black and white gray uh, fast representation of what is going on. We can have wireframe or we can have it with material. And now we get a fast and rough uh, representation uh, with uh, material. That's, you can find it here. So we organize the parameters with name. Here we have to look that this get uncomfortable. So this is our outliner. It's working like a file system. But the problem is now we have uh, a lot of bricks here. And we want to organize it, for example, into a wall and then say these are the bricks of the wall. So for example, if I now change, uh, move, uh, um, Move the, this brick, move it. I don't want to have it, I want to move all the wall. So therefore, I have to put that and parroting that. It, it's, it's not group, it's a parent. They call it like that. So and what we can insert, uh, go again for, put the uh, cursor to zero, zero, zero. And then we introduce an an uh, empty object we call that wall and then we can put all our our bricks so this is a no uh, what is this? Into this wall. There's a faster way, but this is a... Okay. I just want to show you that if you don't make it at the beginning properly, 
<laughs> you run in trouble. It's always a mess of work. Though the ground is wrong, get it back. Now we have the wall with all the bricks. <clears throat> Good. And now it's, it's grouped, you can copy the whole story and so on. Um, this is how to model uh, these things. There's one specific tutorial for that, which is discussing it in detail. Next step is, because we want to be fast, is to go to uh, high quality rendering. This is a principal shader. <clears throat> so we already had, we have uh, six bricks, we have uh, and one plane, we have two colors. So what you always have is, these are kind of libraries. You have the library of all the meshes, which are these objects, a plane, uh, then these cubits and so on. You have a library of, uh, of colors, you have library of, 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 of. So there are a lot of different libraries. And the whole problem is just to combine these things. So it looks like that you have here a brick of a certain material. That's not the case. What you have is you take the geometry, you take the material and put it, link it. It's a linkage. Then you take a texture, then you take this and so on. And you simply pack it. And this thing here is nothing but links to elements of libraries. By that it's getting fast. So this, it's very important to understand that whatever you see, it's not a thing. And it's not uh, the, the primacy of, of, of geometry. You have an index or an element, whatever it is, like this empty element, it's nothing. And then you join certain characteristics to this element in space. And you have to organize your things in libraries. So, therefore, and this is a little confusing to see. So, you have it, <coughs> for example, here. So, I'm, I'm selecting this, this, this uh, top brick here. Then my, uh, so this is brick 007. So, so it has certain um, uh, coordinates here. You see all the parameters. If I ch uh, choose another one, that is different. So these are other parameters of them. This is the material. So what you have here is that you can have... This is a library of materials. And it looks like that you can select and so on. The, the problem is that this is had nothing to do, as a conceptual problem, it has nothing to do with your object, it's just a library. And what, so, it, so it's a simple access to the library, and what you choose here is the link out of the library. So you only have to manage your materials, and then you have to manage your geometrical objects, and then you have to make the links. That's it, it's like knitting. So it's not the material of and so on. So it's a material, it's an object, and you link an object to a material. By that, so you see this white plastic. This is white plastic as well. But now I can say this guy should be of green ground. So if now, and now we can go here for for another editor in the in the cycles renderer this is this ray tracer we go here for the uh, node editor and you see here this is a hierarchical uh, um, a view to these kind of menus so and here you see i can go to white plastic so, so and then here's i have another parameter go again here to green ground it's the same thing So 
So if I change it to red, the color is changed. And because, for example, the ground is linked to this color, the ground is changed as well. Because the ground has no color. It just has an index to a color in the library. If you want to have it separate, that's very important, then you go make it undo. So, for example, if this guy here should have now make, make him white again. So, if this guy here should have the green ground, but a copy of it, then you choose this here. Then you have white. No, sorry. You have green ground here, and then you say copy. And then you get green ground 001 as we had brick 001 and so on. And now, this is uh, green ground 001. If I now change it to red, it's just this one. So it's a little complicated to understand these principles in these interfaces, because they have a certain flow of uh, how to behave, and you have to get a clear understanding of these things. And this is constituent for everything. So it's a lot of things you have to, to match, and it's always organized in libraries, and then you link your stuff and your references to libraries. And you never have, you try not to have any redundancies. So if you want to change a color or a material, it should be like that, that it's only at one place if you to change that. And then the whole building should, uh, uh, should uh, behave like that. So and it's a little complicated to keep that in, uh, in control with these, uh, with these systems. But this is in all CAT systems like that. But they don't tell it. It's, they, in this kind of production, they, they, are, they, are not, they say it's too complicated to learn and to, to describe these things. I don't understand why. So that's it with these uh, materials. Give it white. <clears throat> now we want to go to this uh, high quality thing. Um, <clears throat> um, get rid of this guy here. And then we make five minutes break. Okay. Now, if we want to have, now we have the objects, we have a clear structure here, we named it properly, there will be an extra structure with uh, classes and inheritance, so we have in CAT system we always blocks or classes and so on, we will have layers and all this kind of stuff, this will be later, but now we have a clear and nice uh, structure of what we want here, we have a clear uh, reference with, with, the, with the objects, with the colors and so on, now we want to have a proper uh, rendering of that. So, for that we choose here this uh, this renderer. And we have two things to, uh, to solve. The first is <coughs> with, the <coughs> with, the, uh, with the light. Um <coughs> Currently we have the world. We have a certain background with a certain color, it's here. We have a strength of one, we can put it to zero and then nothing is there. So we have a diffuse light from background. Um, this is display, then we have a background somewhere here. So, if we want to get rid of this diffuse light, give that background a zero, and now we add a sun. So this is a lamp, a sun, and now we get directional light. 
the sun is directional and this means it's abstracting from its position it doesn't matter where it is but it's important uh, the rotation is important so and um, if you look at the horizon and the position there then the vertical is, uh, is x and y so we can put it up here for example at 45 degrees you see now it's going around here and the dead axis is going around here horizontally so that's nice <coughs> so these are more parameters for the light this is important as the diffusion of the uh, 50 centimeters 0.5 the fusion of the sun, so it's the size of the, you see, this is a reflection of the sun here. It's the size of it, and by that these shadows get smooth. That's fine. We have it here. And we can uh, increase the, the, uh, the strength of the sun, or give it a color, and so on. So, but that's enough. So now let's uh, go for um, another object to show you the strengths where's, where's the cube. Okay, now we have um, this nice uh, cube. We smoothen it. Now it's getting nice and and uh, round. Again, this is a sphere. The sphere. Now go for this sphere material and say this is uh, red glass go for the principal BSD make that red so all this is you see the reflection here that's nice it's it's a little plastic and, and glossy so if you want with this principal <coughs> principal shader you have this peculiarity, so now it's getting very metallic. So here, that's fine, and you, then you have the roughness. You give it, give it a mat. You do, can do it with everything. So and here, uh, so metallic, specular, and roughness is important, and then transparency. have to go down here to get glass something's going wrong why is there no glass? <laughs> You get the idea, huh?
So next step is <coughs> Uh, the camera now uh, control shift O to uh, get the camera to the actual view now you can lock the camera to this view and now you're moving the camera you're happy with this We are here. Now it's glass. It's okay. I have to be a little patient. Good. I think we make... Uh, I, I start rendering now and then we can make a break. So rendering is always uh, here. <coughs> um, you have to define the dimensions. So this is uh, HDMI in 50% to increase the rendering speed. If you want to have pre-prints, then go low. Then you have the whole quality, but in less resolution. And here you can put it to full resolution. So if you want to go to animation, you have to be here with frames. We will have animations uh, in the second hour and interaction. So uh, then you have to check the output. So this is a format where to save it. Then you have to, that's I think it's a key things. You have to check your camera. We have, well, this is, I think it's, I like it very much. So you can, can go to focal length and change that, wide angle, or go to tele. You have the focus. You can f uh, focus and can uh, uh, diffuse, so non sharp uh, uh, distance and, and these kind of artificial effects of physical cameras can uh, uh, do these kind of things and you can um, change the aperture this is here what you have with this um, filmic render so it's a color management you have this filmic render this is the extension I, I uh, showed you by that you can uh, change it after rendering or before change the, the gamma because you get an HDR I image and so you can change it after rendering. And so base contract is, is okay. So if you checked all this, then you start uh, the actual uh, rendering. So we make some 10 minutes break and uh, starting at four sharp for the next round. <coughs> 